let's move on to persistent techniques. So I just explained uh, just different ways of doing the behavior analysis. And I'm at the slide 21 and persistence. So this one means basically whether or not malware can survive after each reboot. So I call it as a persistence technique. And for that, malware use some can use either registry key or file system. There's are some specific uh, directory. So whichever the executable exists in like some startup directory, it is supposed to run when a user log in. So malware can uh, copy itself to the certain location in the file system, or it can use like a, I will go in detail. There's like a DLS search order uh, hijacking. These are also just uh, manipulating the how file system or the how uh, OS works to grab some DLLs. This one, and or it can just actually change, you know, put it, it basically modify existing some system files and then put it itself. So whenever it was, there's something missing here. I think services. Simple mode just installed. Right. Oh, actually, that's interesting. Oh, because why? Because it's, um, the how the registry key, yeah. right? So yeah, yeah, we want to see the services, you know, to persist. But I will explain inside the registry key because there's a lot of those and can persist. And another thing is like this is a master record. It on the a disk, it, it can copy itself into the master record. So whenever it's a disk uh, report, still can run or it can hide in the BIOS. And this one, uranium enrichment cent centrifuge PLC. What's gonna be? You know, these are stocks net, so I have it, have it, put it there just for fun. But it actually hide into the, the programming, program of a logic circuit. The, the malware copied itself to the circuit, and it actually maintains this persistent in that circuit, circuit. But in this class, we are going to look at from here to up, okay? All right, let's see all ones. So this is, on, uh, I am at this slide 22. Let's go manage, uh, virtual box manager. Let's start the victim machine. I'm at the page the twenty uh, slide twenty two. And when you start victim VM, victim VM and sys internals. And do you see the uh, other ones? This one? So all ones that's the uh, GUI program, and all one C is just a command line pro command line. So victims, and you can start the all ones here. And do you see the uh, output? All right. So the reason I didn't even mention services or anything on the previous slide. These are the all locations that can be used by malware to persist. Right? There are a lot of them, right? When you scroll down. And when you see the uh, options, filter options. So one that you are actually looking at right now is uh, the entries, registry key, or in you know, a file location uh, is all uh, that is actually being used to persist currently. But when you on the options, filter options, and when you select include empty locations and select yes, and do you see much more entries? See how many entries are, right? All of these can be used to you know for malware to persist. OK, 
Okay, and then the goal of this class is memorize all of these. And that's how I was kidding. <laughs> so you don't need to memorize it because we have to. I want to emphasize, you know, there's a lot of uh, place for uh, to a lot of places they can be used to persist, right? And when you see other tabs, then it is you know the tab I was select was everything. But when you click at the other tab, you are seeing more you know, grouped as a uh, locations. Right here, there's a lot. And now I'll go back everything and options, filter option, and I want to deselect. Okay. And now it has a much less. But there's some some location that actually being used currently. All right. And another thing. Let's go to run the. Uh, do you see the very first line? There is a Windows current version run, right? And when you double click, then reg uh, reg edit is being opened. So actually, you can see what's in it in detail. You see? Okay, I just double click here, right? Then you actually jump to this uh, registry key. You see that? All right. So that's uh, so, so I just done with the uh, slide 23. What's the meaning of the title? Sure. All right. So uh, for if I recall everything, actually I think help had it. Red one was the one that you can identify the. Uh, no, actually said the entries. Hold on a second. The yellow one is file is not found. Red one, I think it was a, you cannot verify the signature. I believe. But well, let me check. Highlight. Highlight. How to spell it? Highlight. H I G light. Highlight. No. Without G. No, okay. Highlight, right? Okay, yeah. I can't spell this one, but when you sit here, I just cannot think. <laughs> All right, here it says, I hope this one says something. Right, yeah. If you select verify options, it highlights in light red, basically, since I'm sure the option, whether it's this one or entry properties, no. Entry properties. So at Pro, there is some option that you can select. Anyway, I'll just skip it. But it's just saying that red one is uh, the signature cannot be verified. Red one, when there is an entry, but you cannot find the file itself, then it has as a red, I know, yellow. File not found right here. Right, it has some uh, registry entry, but associated with the file cannot be found in the file system. Right, so that's what it meant. And all right, any questions so far? And overrun is a really good tool to use. Yeah. A lot of these system internal tools, do they still work if you have uh, sort of pro user privileges on Windows 8.1? Uh, do they still? OK, yeah, yeah. Uh, it works for certain case, but some, sometimes it doesn't. No, no, let's say it will run, but it will not show you everything. For example, uh, if you have running some process in the you know higher privilege, but you are running the process monitor uh, explorer with a low privilege one, then you don't see any information there. Right? I I think you're gonna still run, but yeah, with the limited data. Yeah. All right. Then I will move to page 24. All right, now we, 
So already it is one registry key, right? And if it's a uh, under HK LM, that means it's system wide you know, setting, right? So for this registry key, it is just uh, some common ones that have been used. It, it does not say there's some uh, unknown registry key if it is used for the persistent. It, it does not mean it's less important. Actually, those are the, some keys. You know, you should be you know make sure you are not missing some you know key that is being uh, used for the persistence. And when you say present one, and for the shell, like a win login shell, so shell and really go user in it. So if there is any uh, executable path being uh, specified for for this registry key. That means those executables are executed once a user logs onto the system. So every time user logs on, then that executable will gonna be uh, executed. And app init DLL is uh, once you specify any DLL, but we want to re revisit edge, uh, most of uh, most of these uh, registry keys. But just uh, to briefly mentioning, uh, I'm mentioning it. And app init DLL is the one. One, if you specify some DLL uh, into that registry key, then every executable that use user 32 that DLL will uh, will use all DLL that is specified in this registry key. Okay. And for uh, known DLL, this one is also another. Uh, let me actually not kind of quite sure. So either known or okay, known DLL. If let's say kernel 32 or uh, one if one uh, executable file user kernel 32, then it goes to this you know basically this registry uh, entry first and load it. But let me actually think keep think whether or not no actually so the, sorry about that. No, that's what it is. Okay, known DLL. If one executable use one, I know DLL, then it checks if it is specified here. Then it goes to a certain directory and read the DLL from that directory. That's what it is. Okay, if I'm wrong, I want to correct myself. I kind of was not slightly vague about that information, but I think that's what it is. It just look for certain directory to search a certain DLL. But we really have a topic for that one, right? And services is the one we already looked. If service being registered, then it will be uh, listed under the service registry key. And another one is a uh, image file execution options. Actually, under this here, there is like a debugger uh, value. So once that value is being specified, then whenever one executable runs, then on the uh, behind, actually, the uh, the executable file they listed as a debugger, they actually run first before before uh, that one. And we have another exercise for this uh, this particular registry key. And another one is a browser helper object. That is nothing but like ActiveX. You can put the ActiveX, then you know when uh, Internet Explorer runs, then you're gonna load those ActiveX then. Uh, Object at the same time, so we can basically run through the Internet Explorer. Any question? A difference why there are separate uh, registry key uh, trees, the sub trees, and I found one. In the book, let's say here, it says managing the Windows 2003 registry. So basically, when in the before Windows, Windows 2003, there's a, a lot of application for the Windows 95, right? And the application used, uh, they are using the registry keys that is uh, you know, located in the AKLM software, you know, the Windows, and has you know keys underneath, right? And then they made, then they made a new, you know. Windows to, uh, 2003, but they wanted to throw away all the existing application, right? So, so basically, what they do is they maintain the data key trees for the backward uh, compatibility. Okay, then so they so made right, Windows, <laughs> Windows NT is just in the for the new applications. So they still just keeping it for the uh, backward compatibility. 
Any more questions? It's good. Right. And going to 25. So I just uh, highlight this one because we are not actually looking at the same registry key. We are not because this is a current user specific. So it has the same thing, one key, but it's more specific to the, a certain user. Okay? And same as uh, there's a low one and there's a, another low one shell. But this one, this, this is uh, some registry key that can be changed by a malware that has only user privilege. But for that one, this one requires an administrator privilege. Okay? For XP case, mostly people uh, it use uh, run it as a administrator so it, there was a, so there was sometimes said no since windows you just put the administrator privilege so you know everyone can everyone can in fact you can you know the malware can change anything but i will not go to that uh this uh, discussion but windows 7 i think is better basically mm -hmm. but yeah all right so let's go to the 26 Right, so right. in the top uh, slide 26, let's go to the victim VM. And I just uh, close every window and run reg edit. Then let's go to search for the image file execution options. So go to the uh, registry key path, which is in the slide 26. And in the reg edit, right. same, thing. same thing. Yeah. Kind of this new visual network comp compatibility. The network compatibility. Stuff. Windows, Windows NT. I haven't cleaned up the registry. <laughs> Software. So, Windows NT. I've noticed that they actually. Uh, uh, we built like parts of the operating system. So, for example, like uh, the IP stack, Windows 7 is called U. Okay. Are you at? In the reg edit, are you at this path, image file execution option? And can you check if there is a task manager? You see here? Entry? You don't, right? You don't. Okay. Now let's see how this image file execution option can be used to persist. So and it is not only the malware, it's actually used by the legitimate uh, software, which is we are going to see right now. And here, let's minimize and go to the sys internal suite and go to process explorer. Start. When you select, where's the way each one is it? It has options and it has replace task manager, right? And click. And let's go back to registry editor and file. There should be a refresh. Maybe refresh F5. 
you can select F5, click here somewhere in the empty space and click F5. Then you will see the task manager, the DXE under image file execution option, right? That you, you will see the new registry key uh, has been generated uh, created and inside there is a value, right? <coughs> Debugger, right? And it has now path as a system internal suite and process explorer.exe, right? So how about let's close it, Proce close the uh, process ex explorer and start run and start the uh, task manager, task MGR. As you see, so what it happens is what if the there is an entry in the image uh, image file execution option, if there is an entry and it has a debugger value, then whenever this specific uh, it, uh, file being executed, then it actually execute the debugger first. And it did not first. We execute the debugger what uh, uh, executable base specified in the debugger value. So now guess how this malware we're gonna run. Use any person guess e maybe the easiest way to do it if malware is you know using this you know image file execution option. How do you think it is? So you just replace it certain executable, but then you will notice okay I just launched the task manager but nothing is happening. Then you will know something is going on, right? Then what? How malware we gonna do it? Any guess? Malware is, you know, it want to, you know, compromise the machine, but it even uh, dumb malware still you want to be stealth as possible, right? What we're going to do malware if we make the kind of entry in the, you know, image file, this, you know, image file execution option. If we make a new entry, what are we going to do? Okay. Well, the malware so wait for the command task manager. That initiates the malware, but then the malware goes back to releasing the task manager to be That's right. its original function. That's right, right. So you execute this cell and then call the original one. Then you know you will not see anything different. Task manager pops up, my system is clean, right? So that's one just one way to doing it, doing it for the malware, right? All right. There was the one thing. All right, now go to Okay, slide 27. I'll close it, other uh, drag edit, and the uh, other other windows here. All right, and start up when when you look at uh, slide 27. Is that a start uh, persist persistence using file system and the location in startup locations. Right, it, and it says user profile with the, uh, this is an environment variable for the DOS. And it says start menu of program and startup. Right, let's go then see what, uh, which path it is actually is. Right, so in order to do that, we need to see what this user profile environment, environment variable has, right. And go to command line, and we can check like echo uh, user profile. And okay. Right now, it said user profile is directory C document doc, uh, documents and settings and student. Right. That means when we go here from document student, this is a user profile directory because that's our environment variable says so. And from here, start a menu and programs and start. So any file, if it's copied here, then you only be, those files will be executed when a user logs in. Any question? Be good? All right, so that one was the uh, Page uh, slide 27. So either like basically uh, this directory, 
or another one was all user profile okay all user profile which one is a typo users yes users profile okay that means again on this directory this one first start menu uh, actually doesn't have the directory or is it hidden that i'm not clear but if it has the uh pro oh no never mind programs there is startup there we go there's a directory so anyone you know has in this directory it will gonna be basically used for every users all right let's move to 28 slide 28 now we are actually going to run actual malware slide 28 how about let's kill victim vm so if you didn't have the uh, the state that I have, then please restore the machine and go to auto runs and files and save. And I'm just going to uh, make the snapshot on the desktop. I will just name it as before and save it. You save it the before before you're actually executing the uh, malware. Okay. Once you save and once you see this file here, then go to malware class, then samples, and go to IM form, and double click malware. It looks like a folder, but it is a malware. Actually, it's a .exe file. The auto runs. I, I executed the IM worm and I went back to the auto runs and press F5 to have refresh, or you can select this button to refresh button. And then after that, go to files, a file, and compare. And you can select before and open. Then you should see these green lines, green lines, that is actually being different from before infecting malware and after. Good. So the question is, how does the malware persist? Observe, observe what files are created in which directories. Who can answer that one? Right? I will not make you read this screen. I will just go through it. Windows system, right? You see the lsets.exe actually created, but no, never mind. I will wrote this one first because the question is which files being created? Do you see uh, document settings or user uh, program startup directory? We actually looked at directory just before. So it generate created um, msconfig.exe file, right? And let's go see. It's there. document settings or users start menu startup okay programs startup menu do you see any, right? This is on one of the uh, malware functional it has. It is actually, there is a case, maybe it deleted itself, but why would they delete it itself if you want, you want to persist using this directory? So we can also, maybe it's hidden, right? So we, we actually put some uh, labs, uh, either tomorrow or the day after tomorrow, we want to see how it's uh, hiding itself, this file, right? So, right, this path was right, we went there, Right, start up. I will let you compare if I made any mistake here. Right, the path 
And it says there is a mass compute.exe, but explore is not showing you if there is a file. There's nothing here, right? But that's then another way to let's see what's going on. Let's see then through the those prompt. Right? You don't see any here either, right? So I will uh, tomorrow. I will yeah. The following we will have how this malware is actually hiding these files, and that's one thing. And let's see. So, but since these older ones, when I will scroll it down, well, okay, only the entry that is being different before uh, being infected or and after after is only these three lines. So. The answer for this one is yes, it is generating the MS config.exe files to one of these startup directory. And the next question is observe what registry keys are created or modified, right? So when you see here, it uh, actually modified or it is it was I think it exists. So it is modified this uh, user init value to Windows system ss.exe, right? So when user logged in, then you want to execute this executable file. Okay, Windows system and ss.exe. Okay, one thing to mention, there actually ss.exe, uh, actually one of the Windows system file is like a, did I mention it somewhere here? Probably, okay, it's a local security, local security authority subsystem service. It is actually existing file, but what um, this uh, IM1 is doing it is just using the same name so that it can be uh, not stealthy, still you know manipulating the users, right? But one thing that you wanna uh, uh, see is user system actually this directory is actually being used for the 16-bit uh, executables. This uh, user uh, Windows system directory is not used by this 32 bit, not used. Actually, system any file is not coming from this directory. Right? And let's see what's there actually. See, Windows system. Okay. So these are the 16, but let me see. View detail. Do you see access? Okay, you don't see access.exe either, right? So it means it may be hidden, right? So, but it's there, basically. Because Oleron identified it and it is not identified as a, like, you know, file not found either, right? So, and we're going to go to uh, uh, that lab, you know, how it, uh, the malware is hiding a file. All right, so we are at uh, slide 29. And any questions so far? Okay, before actually uh, end for today, um, okay, I want to mention it a page uh, page 30. So so LSS. And MS config actually when I do the MD5, it's actually the same files. And probably Father Lab has you know a uh, front monitor, front monitor, and you will see you know actually the files being actually copied. And not only that, we can actually do some you know get the try to get the MD5 of these files. Okay. And All right, I think I mentioned all of them. Oh, one thing is not only the access MS config that you see also is the uh, Windows a system a system file that you know comes with the Windows, so it's just trying to it kind of uh, to be sneaky. Yeah, that's all right. It's the malware trying to be sneaky. All right, that's uh, what I mentioned uh, at uh, slide thirty. So the MS config that you see is a system configuration executable. Okay. So we finish till slide 30 and we will come back and just start from the 31. Okay, this sounds fine? Okay, good. All right, then I will see you tomorrow.